If 300 people could be successful in one thing, then how the hell can I not be successful as well? So I committed. I told myself, if someone else can do that thing, so can I. So can I. I have to be able to do it as well. And I've had that belief. I've had that belief. And that belief has helped me. That belief has helped me achieve great things in my life. And it's not just my life. The people in my community, some of our affiliates, our sales team, just people like Jason. Well, Joni is sharing her screen, so fuck, I guess I'll just use Joni. There's people just like Joni, right? Where when she came in here to do affiliate marketing, I'm pretty sure she did not believe affiliate marketing was a possibility for her. Yeah, she's seen that she could potentially make these results, but I'm pretty sure she didn't actually believe it with every fiber of her being. Joni. 1800, I'm sorry, 1800. 1800 your first week here? 1800 her first two weeks here. How do you think, how do you think this is possible? If, Joni, if you did not see other people leading the way for you, do you think this would have been possible for you? Yes or no? But she wouldn't have been able um, to, to, to be able to, to, to make her first sales, right? Okay, very good. Jai just turned on her camera. It's nice seeing you, sweetheart, right? We should see you more often, right? I spoke to Jai when Jai made her first sale. How long did it take you to make your first sale, Jai? One week. One week? How much was your first sale? Over $300? See, she's trying to do numbers. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Um, so, very good. All right, awesome. So now my question is to you is, me and you had a conversation. How did that conversation turn out? Because when, it, when you made your first sale, I asked you, what influenced you? How did you get to your first sale? I asked you that question. And what did you tell me? Um, it was because I saw Danny make her first sale a couple of days prior. And as I've been sharing, and I shared with you before, it lit a fire up in me. Because we were at the same, we started at the same time and seeing her being able to do it really inspired me uh, to believe in myself to be able to do it as well. She made her sale after she saw Danny do it, right? Danny made like $500 the day before her and Danny and her were in the same exact class. So for Jai, it was like, holy shit. Someone that I just took the workshop with, she was just able to make the, the results. This has to be real. This has to be true. I can actually do this. And because of that, she, she lit a fire under herself and guess what she did? She fucking did it. She did it. But then why didn't she, why didn't she do it before that, right? And that's because some of us, we don't believe things are possible until we see other people do it. So one of my big beliefs again is if someone else has done it, so can I. If someone else has accomplished something that I want to accomplish, I can also do it. I just have to apply myself enough and stop making excuses for myself. Jai could have made all the excuses in the world, but she didn't. She could have said, well, I'm Asian and Danny's white, you know, and English may not be my first language or whatever the case is, or, you know, I, I wear glasses and Danny doesn't. So maybe that's why, like she could have made excuses, but she didn't. And this is what I'm trying to explain to you. If someone else has done it, so can you. Right, and the last way I'm gonna explain this is before all of this, before the Junior Anthony that you guys see here, before the, the, the glitz and the glamour and the life story, before all of this shit, when I was sitting at home, wasting my life away, partying, smoking weed, just being involved in a bunch of stupid stuff, because of, again, my environment, right? Some things, we just get it from our environment. I didn't believe that I was worth anything. I, I didn't. I, I seen black people as failures. I, I did, like honestly, if you guys want me to be truthful with you guys, this is it. I thought black people were failures. All the black people, they either had to be a football player or bat they had to be into some type of sports, right? An athlete. They had to be a rapper, right? Or a drug dealer. How many of you guys have that belief as well? I mean, only the black people, please wiggle your hands. I don't need any other. No colored people, no, no, no white people for this one, please. Only the black people. How many of you guys also had that belief like growing up? I don't know about you, but I only believe, hey, you have to either be an athlete, a rapper, or a drug dealer. And that's the only way black and Spanish people, I guess Spanish people could get away with it too, right? It's what I believe. Brianna, she's wiggling her hands, right? There's a reason why I can't have, you know, any other race doing that. It's not a good look, right? Um, but that's what I thought. And then, um, I found Black J. I call him Black J because I had Black J and White J in my life. Um, I found Black J. And to me, I'm looking at this guy that, that looks like me, like same color skin. And this guy bought a fucking $18 million building. How many of you guys know about the White House? Wiggle your hands. 
He named this building in Georgia the Black House. Like you guys can Google it. He named this building the Black House. To me, I was just like, you can do that? You can do that? I, I didn't know that you could do stuff like that. I didn't think people could do that. And I started researching him. I realized, hey, he wasn't a drug dealer. Well, he was a drug dealer, but he didn't get rich off of selling drugs. He didn't get rich by being an athlete. He didn't get rich by being a rapper. He was an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur. And that changed my entire idea about everything that I thought I knew about myself. Granted, I was like, I'm not entrepreneurial. I don't know shit about entrepreneurship. I don't even have a business. That was my thoughts as well. Which then lead me to belief number two. If one, then one million. I didn't start my business because I wanted a business. Everything started for me just because, hey, I want to see if this, this digital marketing thing works. I want to see if this thing actually works, if I can actually acquire a client. For me, when I got started and I got my first client, it was more about, hey, I want to prove to myself that it can actually sell somebody. That's how I started. I didn't have the expectations of building Live Satori or building my digital marketing agency. I didn't have those expectations. I didn't. I didn't think about them. I didn't have the plans for it. I didn't have the schematics. I didn't have none of that. All I did was I said, hey, I just want to get one client. That first client, you know how much they pay, he paid me? My first client paid me $500 a month. You know how much my second client paid me? My second client paid me $1,500 a month. You know how much my last client paid me? $20,000 a month. And it, all it started was with one. It started with one client. One. Not two, not three, not five, not 10, not 20, not, not 100. It started with one. And everything started snowballing. But it started with one. Every single one of you guys in here that has sold a product for me, that has made affiliate commissions, if one, then a million. If you are able to make a dollar with me, you could make a million dollars with me. If you can make $10 with me, you can make a million dollars with me. A thousand dollars with me, you can make a million dollars with me. Unless you have to sit down and wait for Trang to believe it's possible. She's already at half a million dollars. She's already at half a million dollars, but guess what? She started with one sale. She started with one commission. She started from the bottom where every single one of you guys are at right now. That's where she started. If one, then a million. I remember how Live Satori started. A lot of you guys don't know how Live Satori started. I didn't plan on doing affiliate marketing. I didn't. I knew about affiliate marketing. I didn't plan on doing affiliate marketing. How many of you guys wanna hear the story of how I got started doing all of this? Move your hands. And this is where a lot of you guys, you guys, you guys kinda of screw yourself over. Most of you guys just think about money. Most of people just think about, hey, I wanna make the fast buck. I wanna be able to make some cash for myself or my kids, my family or whatever the case is. You don't think about other people. I had a friend um, from my past life who was into music. He was still doing the music thing. I stepped away from doing the music thing. I started working with clients. I bumped into him. I showed him what I was doing. He was completely wowed. So he wanted me to help him pretty much do exactly what I'm doing for my clients. He wanted me to do it for him, except of course he didn't have a product, so it'd be more work. So I showed him, hey, let's drop ship some fucking headphones. So we went on AliExpress, got some headphones, ordered it to his house, did an entire logo design, everything from, I did this completely for free. You know why? He's one of my old friends, right? I don't need a dollar from you. I already have clients. Long story short, he fucking sucked at talking. Like how the fuck do you want to be a rapper and you don't even know how to talk or sell or even like you ever seen like those old, those like those cheesy movies, like spin it, spinning the chair. Hello, these are some cool headphones. And I'm like, bro, like that's not going to work, right? That's not going to work. So then what I started doing is I started literally going and trying to research another way for him to make money so that he can get better at marketing. You know what I found? Guess what I found guys? Affiliate fucking marketing. I'm like, bro, you can't even fuck affiliate marketing up, bro. You can't. Like there's zero ways to fuck up affiliate marketing unless you're just doing something stupid. All it is is pretty much finding a product and selling that product to somebody else. It is not your product. You don't have to create a product. You don't have to do anything besides match a buyer to a seller and collect a commission. Just like real estate, just like a car salesman, just like a stockbroker, just like a lot, of, like a like life insurance agent, all you're doing is connecting a buyer to a seller and collecting a commission in the middle. Can't really f that up. 
guess what? He fucked that up. So I got him into it pretty much um, and I paid for it. Like I wanted to show him like the entire process behind it. So I purchased something for him and I literally showed him, hey, just do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. This is how the process of marketing is, right? This is like, this is pretty much someone's funnel. This is what I do on click funnels, yada, yada, yada. Now all you have to do is grab a product and thing. A few moments later, I'm getting a bunch of messages of people asking for the same exact fucking help that he's asking for. So what did I do? What did I do? Did I say, hey, Phyllis, uh, you want help? Come and buy my shit. Come buy my stuff from me. Did I do that? Yes or no? No. For my, like probably a month. Right, this was, I guess, during COVID. So things were a little bit slower for me with the business. I was sitting on Zoom calls with a class about 40, 50, 60, 70 people every single day, helping people connect their shit for free. I enjoyed doing it, it wasn't bothering me. But then you know what happened after? No one made results. The same exact way Deborah's in here right now, Deborah would come back in tomorrow and ask me the same fucking questions. And then the day after and ask me the same, uh, the same questions. And then we had one lady that came in, took everything that I told her to do, and in 24 hours, she made $2,000 selling Blake Newbar's program. Two grand selling Blake Newbar's program. She came back to me, hey Junior, you made me two grand. What do I do next? And I'm like, how did you make two grand? And I'm like spending my time telling these people the exact same thing and they're making zero dollars. She said, well, because they're not taking you seriously. You have to charge for this. So I didn't have any intentions of selling anything. You know when like there's divine intervention? How many of you guys remember I said, I am not an entrepreneur. I don't have an entrepreneur. I, I did not think about entrepreneurship. I didn't know what the fuck. How many of you guys remember that with your hands, right? Again, like I said, I was doing shit for free. When I'm making, when I have a, a client pay me $20,000, I still had my same client pay me $500. Does that sound entrepreneurial to you? Yes or no? Not fucking really. Okay, I, I'm lying. He didn't, uh, we raised a little bit, but it was damn near still $500, right? Does not sound entrepreneurial at all. In fact, the smart thing for me to do would be double down on my high paying clients, but I didn't. Divine intervention. There's this guy that messaged me, long fucking message, telling me, hey, um, I live in the Philippines and I've been hit with a tsunami and this, then a third, this, then a third, my life sucks and this is happening with me and this is happening with me and I see you helping everybody else. But hey, if there's, is there anything that you can do for you to help me make, I think he said like $10 or something like that. He sent me that message. He had $10 in his bank account. He sent me a screenshot of what his bank account looked like and he said, Junior, my birthday is in two days. Is there any way that you can help me make $100 before my birthday? My reaction is figure it out, right? Figure it out yourself, right? But then what happened after was I sat down and I thought, okay, what if the same exact thing I'm doing for free right now, what if I just charge for it and I allow him to collect commissions on it? These people are already, are already showing up. They already want it. What if I just allow him to collect commissions on it? I offered that, um, uh, the guy, Eric, I could call him Eric because no one knows him as Eric anyway. His Facebook isn't Eric, right? So I offered Eric the opportunity. And then by the end of the week, I had 10 people that was begging me for the opportunity. Because then they seen that Eric, who had $10 to his name that first day, in those two days, he not only made like $100, he was able to make like $200 or $300 by his birthday. How many of you guys consider that a, a huge fucking win? Wiggle your hands. So fast forward a little bit later, we had people saying, hey, and like really before, this is before I opened up a mentorship. I didn't have any mentorship available. I didn't have, hey, I'm gonna work with you privately. I just had a class. Then I had a bunch of people then hounding me, hey, Junior, you should sell us the mentorship. You should sell us to work with you more directly. You should sell us, you should sell us. And then I was just like, all right, fuck it. How much you guys wanna pay? They told me how much they wanted to pay and they paid and then I was just like, all right, fuck it, great. And that's how this started. It started with me being able to impact one person, one person. Look at how many people are in here right now. Look at how many people are in here, 140 people right now. It started with me wanting to help and impact one person. When we go and build houses in Mexico, it started with one person. Trang and a few others are now donating money to kids in Kenya and Mexico and Vietnam. It started with one person. If you can impact one person, you can impact a million people. My third, just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean that it's not possible. I didn't think I can impact people. I didn't think I was impactful. Again, if I've never impacted anybody, how could I ever impact anybody? So I had this belief as well that I couldn't do these things. But then it slowly started changing. 
not because of a circumstance or a situation, because I made a choice. Whatever other people feel is possible or not does not dictate what I believe is possible. When I first got started in here, when I first started Life Satori, probably two weeks in, three weeks in, I had a guy, he messaged me. I actually, he dropped out of my program, right? He said, I'm a scam. He said, I'm a scam because no one is ever, I will always remember this. Anytime I feel down, I will always remember this. He said, I'm a scam because no one will ever make $2,000 in my program. How comical is that? How comical? He said, no one will ever make $2,000 following what you teach. It is impossible. This is what he told me. I can literally screenshot the message and show you guys. This is his message to me. No one will ever make $2,000 following what you teach. How many of you guys have doubters, criticizers? How many of you guys have doubters and criticizers? People that say that you can't do things. We all have that. I have that. If you think you have those, I have that times 100 because everyone's looking at me waiting for my downfall. He said that I would not be able to help anyone make $2,000. Jai, what is the most amount of money you've been able to make in a week? Type it in the chat. Guys, every one of you guys that have sold my products, I want you guys to type in the chat. What is the most amount of money that you've made in a week? Type that, those answers in the chat. Type it in the chat. I want everyone to see it. And there was someone out there that told me that it is impossible for me to ever help anyone make $2,000 following my method. Jai made $4,000 plus in a week. Abigail, $9,000 in a week. Keaton, $6,000 in a week. Natalie, $4,000 in a week. Jason, $5,000 a week. The other Jason, $4,000 in a week. Maya, $6,000 a week. Trang, $15,000 in a week. Uh, Kayla, $4,000 in a week. And Kayla's a whole ass mom. Atreen, $5,000. Joni, $4,600 in a week. Seth, $7,000 a week. Burnell, $3,400 in a week. Orit, $7,900 in 24 hours. Damn, Orit is just trying to show off on people. She's just like, yeah, I did this in, 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 in a day. Kenzie, $1,700, born in 2,400. And the list goes on. Guys, I could literally read the fucking list forever. I'm sorry, but I'm not. I love you guys. Even Miss fucking Kathy, $1,500 in a day. Miss Kathy, tell everyone how much money you've been able to make in a day. $1,500. Actually, in two hours. How old are you and how much internet experience do you have? 76 years old and I didn't have any. In fact, it took me three hours just to get on Zoom. Okay, that part too. Thank you so much. But yet still, I had somebody sit down and tell me that no one will ever be able to make $2,000 with me. What if I chose to believe that, guys? What if I chose to believe that? What if I chose to believe a limitation that somebody else put on me? Where would I be right now? Where would you guys be right now? Dr. Eunice. When Dr. Eunice started, another lady, 60 plus years old, no one in our company has ever made $1,000 at this point. This is when we just started again. Remember I told you the guy said no one would be able to make $2,000? Well, he left a week later, incoming Dr. Eunice. And no one has ever been able to make $1,000 a day with us. The highest earner was a guy named Ryan. And he made $400 in one single day. And we were celebrating. Guys, imagine that. That's what we were celebrating for. We were jumping for joy for $400 in a day. Dr. Eunice comes. She didn't know anything about computer, just like how Miss Kathy said, I don't know anything about computer, I don't know anything. We had to have Celso teach Dr. Eunice how to copy and paste, because Dr. Eunice didn't even know how to copy her affiliate link and paste it. She didn't even have those skills. When she got her computer, the same exact week she got her computer, Dr. Eunice made $1,000 in a day. Guys, give it up for Dr. Eunice. She's not even here right now, but give it up for Dr. Eunice. She didn't see anybody do it, but she knew that it was capable. It was possible. She could do it. Just because it hasn't been done doesn't mean that it's impossible. Same thing with Orit as well. Orit was the first person in our company to hit 20 grand in a month. Anywhere close to that. She made it possible for everyone else. And I want you guys to think of other situations like that. There's Amazon. Jeff Bezos wanted a better way to do things, but the way that he's seen things was not possible. There was no, it did not exist. It did not exist. An online bookstore? Who the fuck would want to read books online? Look at how that idea developed. Look at how that idea grew. Look how he took something that has never been done before and created gold. I was also told a year ago, two years ago, the worst business model is affiliate marketing. He said my business model is shit. 
I was actually speaking to somebody recently about this. He said, even if you spend all of your time and you help these people become better, eventually they're all gonna turn on you and bite you back because those are the people that you're dealing with. This is what, how many of you guys heard of Dan Kennedy with your hands? Grandfather of marketing? This is what Dan Kennedy told me. He said, this affiliate marketing, it's charity. If you really wanna do something, sell a high ticket product, work with people that actually have money and stop trying to help people that cannot help themselves. This is what he told me. He said, you're gonna spend a lot of energy, time, trying to build people up that's gonna destroy you in the end. He showed me other examples of other people. But I said, I've been doing this for, and granted, like, you know, in certain situations, he's absolutely right. But I told him, listen, when I'm building, the vision that I have for what I'm building is bigger than just myself. It's more than just selling an affiliate product. It's more than just promoting an affiliate accelerator live class, or it's bigger than that. It's about changing people's lives. It's about giving them a chance. There's so many of us in here right now that has been counted out, that's been doubted, that has no one to support them, may have been casted out as a black sheep as well. There's so many of us in here right now that has that, and we don't have a direction. I, I believe that affiliate marketing can, can unite each and every one of us. I believe we can utilize affiliate marketing to not only change our lives, but create impact in this world that we live in. See the better world that we wanna see. See the change. I believe this, and so far, I can honestly say Dan Kennedy was wrong. And yes, we've had people that would sit down and say all kinds of things about me. Absolutely. Yes, I've helped people and they did turn around and bite me in my back or stab me in my back. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But he's wrong because I'm still able to build this thing with these people and create impact in this world. And he couldn't see that. He couldn't see it. But it's being done right now as we speak. In March, he didn't see that. August, he didn't see that. December, he didn't see that. He didn't see Kayla being able to quit her job. He didn't see that. He didn't see Jason being able to spend time with his son and actually see his son, not just as this little kid, but as a, a human. He didn't see that. You cannot let everyone or anyone else's limitations dictate your direction of your life. Yes, he didn't have the patience for it. Or he couldn't do that. But I fucking believe I can. I believe. I believe without a shadow of doubt that I can help end things like homelessness and world hunger and so on and so forth. I believe it. Why? Because of the ripple effect. It's the compound effect between each and every one of us. It's the compounding effect between each and every one of us. I cannot reach everybody, but I could reach Mackenzie. And guess what? Mackenzie can reach 10 other people. Mackenzie cannot reach 10 other people or, or, or everybody, but the people that Mackenzie reach can reach other people. I believe in the power of ripple effect. And yes, you are gonna get discouragements. You are. Today, um, and I'm gonna talk about some of the discouragements that I'm going through on a daily basis so that you guys understand I am also human. Today, um, I was looking at uh, pretty much a forum of some people pretty much talking about me. I'm a tyrant and I run a cult. How would you guys feel if you're putting your blood, sweat, and tears and helping people build people to change their lives and then you're sitting down seeing other people calling you a tyrant and a cult? How would that make you guys feel? Type it in the chat. Knowing of all the impact that you've helped other people acquire, all the growth, all the change, or REIT, being able to come off of drug addictions, Countless of people being able to get off of cigarette habits, smoking cigarettes, some people being able to stop smoking weed. No matter what you do, there's going to be people that's going to discourage you. But you have to hold on to your three beliefs. There are going to be people that discourage you. There are going to be people that lie on your name and try to shame you and make you out to be something that you're not. There are going to be those situations. But guess what? You have to man up. Be strong. I was looking at another situation. I was looking at another situation where this lady said that she met me at an event and she went to shake my hand, right? And I said, I know who you are. And I walked away from her. For the ones that actually know me, does that even sound like my personality? Not, not the ones that, that think they know me because they're on Zoom with me. For the ones that has actually met me in real life, hung out with me, does that even look or sound like my personality? AB, unmute yourself. My first time meeting AB and understand again, if I can remember when is the first time I meet these people, just imagine how much meeting people mean to me. AB, the first time I met AB was in my event in Mexico. AB, unmute yourself. 
The first time that I met you was at my event in Mexico. You came to me to shake my hand. What did I do? You welcomed me. Like, you shook my hand as well. Did I just shake your hand? No, like, what is it? You gave me a hug. I gave AB a, I gave AB a fucking hug. I was like, fuck a handshake. Come on, brother. Give me a fucking hug. And this lady is out here spreading news saying that she, she, she extended her hands and I just walked away from her. I know who you are and walked away from her. There's people that's going to sit down and try to smear you. It doesn't matter what the fuck you're doing. The more successful, the more they'll fucking try. And this is why I'm telling you guys these things. Not because I want you guys to feel for me. I don't care about that. If you know me, then you know I don't fucking care. But I'm showing you these are the things that comes with success. You think it's gonna be an easy fucking road? You think it's gonna be an easy fucking, oh, boop, 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 I'm successful, yeah. Do you think it's gonna be an easy fucking cakewalk? Absolutely not. You're gonna have people in your family that's gonna try to tear you down. And then when they see and realize how successful you are, then they're gonna ask you for a bunch of fucking favors. And then you don't do those fucking favors, guess what they're gonna go right back to do? Trying to tear you back down. You're gonna have friends that's gonna do the same exact thing. But I discovered how I can remain encouraged. And this is what I really wanna to speak to you guys about. Not the discouragement. I wanna to speak to you guys about how each and every one of you guys can remain encouraged through this journey because it's going to be a lonely one. Misery loves company. It is going to be a lonely journey. How can you remain encouraged? It's actually very simple and it boils back down to my belief stack. Believe in who you are, believe in what you are doing and believe in why you are doing it. And with these three things, no type of discouragement can ever break you because you're gonna be convicted. You're gonna be determined. You're gonna be sold on whatever you are doing. Tom says I'm a piece of Oh yeah, Tom, I am. Great news, baby, but come on, let's do this thing. Cause I know who I am. I have a specific belief. So this all boils back down to what belief do you wanna hold on to? Do you wanna believe the, whole, the beliefs of other people or do you wanna to choose to believe your beliefs? Guys, you can create your own belief. You can create what you wanna believe. You don't have to listen to everything that's being said to you or told to you. You don't have to. Most of us were taught to believe that we cannot accomplish great things in the short amount of time that we are here on this earth. I am here to tell you guys that I believe that each and every one of you guys can accomplish the impossible, but you have to believe it. So this is my belief stack. These are the things that I think about every single morning, every single day. Who do you believe that you are? That belief, I promise you guys, those three beliefs, it's gonna change everything you do.